In the days before Christ's birth, all of Israel cried out for deliverance. Deliverance from poverty, from tyranny, and from bondage. God heard their cries and sent them exactly what their hearts longed for. Yet some chose to see only a baby and not a deliverer. Like the night of the Savior's birth, their hearts were black and cold and bound by sin and pride. The coming of the Lord was only the beginning of the most important events they would ever witness. The time of waiting for deliverance was over. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. The night was frozen, unyielding, like the art of man. The winds blew, razor sharp gusts, and I fought to keep our fire going. I remember it still. Elohim snoring next to me. Oy, he could snore. <laughs> His snore would keep any thief away. The others slept, huddled around the campfire. It was my turn to sit out the wee hours of the night with only Ari, the sheepdog, to watch with me. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. 
And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. I cannot tell you how it happened. Oi, one moment the sheep, the crackling fire, the wind, the next. The sky was bright as noonday. Every shepherd was instantly awake. An angel was telling us to go to Bethlehem. He said that a baby had been born, that peace had come to earth. The sky filled up with angels. So many, I lost count. Their voices thundered so loud, the other shepherds shook with fear. Even Elohim was clinging to me like a Torah schoolboy. <laughs> uh, I admit, I was frightened myself. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Then all the noise had ceased, and it was night again. 
We all stared at each other in shock. Suddenly, I roused myself. We must go to Bethlehem now, I said firmly. No one argued with me, not even Elohim, who always argues. We set off. We walked as fast as we could in the dark toward Bethlehem. Our voices rose and fell as we discussed the things that we had seen. None of us knew exactly what it all meant, but we had a notion it meant something good, something beyond time and space. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe 
lying in a manger. In the stable, we found the baby, wrapped in swaddling clothes, just like the angel had said. The man and his wife watched our approach with curiosity. Their eyes were very, and the woman smiled shyly. Still, they let us sit and stare at the baby. As I gazed upon the baby's face, I wondered, was this really the Messiah? Sheep shifted noisily in their pens surrounding us, and the smells, oi! And yet, I knew that in here was greatness, and I could sense that Yahweh himself stood in the shadows of that stable, waiting, expectant, I felt his eyes on me, and in that silent night, his voice bleeding. For thus saith the High and Lofty One that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is Holy, I dwell in the high and holy place, with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble, and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. It seemed to me a holy ush filled the stable as we all sat there watching him. Maybe 
this was the holiest night of all. I sent something more, something that drew me to this baby. It was almost as if I could hear his voice calling to my heart, me, a poor shepherd who only knew the fields and open sky and lambing. I could not understand, but suddenly I felt as though all I could do was to humble myself before him. I dropped to my knees and bowed my head, worshiping. I heard the other shepherds around me doing the same. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe it in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love, therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. I felt another emotion that night. Not one, not one that I talk of often, except maybe to my wife, Shoshana. She understands. She's not as much of a yenta, a busybody, as Iliam's wife. Uh, this feeling, it was love. Now, <laughs> I know a thing or two about love. <clears throat> Love is gentle and good. It does not seek to do another ill. We all desire to be loved, but we often seek for it in all their wrong places. One thing I know, 
God is love. And he shows his love gently, softly, just like Mary was crooning to that baby. He does not force himself on us, but comes to us on our brightest days and darkest nights, loving us through each one. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. In the years after his birth, I watched how he grew. He was a good boy. I remember the day he confounded Ananias the high priest and the other learned doctors in the temple. Ay, 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 the expressions on their faces were priceless. And I knew, just knew, that he was the Messiah we had been longing for. He often put that religious crowd pompous group of Pharisees and Sadducees in their place. Someone needed to. Huh? True? Of course true. And the miracles he did. No one had ever raised a little girl from the dead or gave sight to the blind 
No one could imagine how he could perform miracles, but we saw it with our own eyes. But when the political tide turned against him, I could not understand. He was to be our Messiah, the one who would deliver us from Roman rule. Yet our nation's art turned against him. They all thought he was Meshug, crazy. If he knew the prophets had proclaimed his arrival, and there he was. Yet we, his own people, were rejecting him. Nothing seemed to make sense after that. Then we heard he had been taken to Pilate and was to die. Even then, I did not understand until I saw him broken, bleeding on that cross. He had come to die. As a child, I remember the high priest saying ah, that a sacrificial lamb was required to cover our sins. And then I knew, just like the lambs Elim and I brought to the temple to be slaughtered, he was our sacrificial lamb. As a shepherd, I understood sacrifice. He was our Messiah, sent to deliver us from our sins. And anyone who wanted to receive him could. Finally, everything he told us began to make sense. I saw how this gift was given to us, to Israel, and to me. That day at the cross, I accepted this gift. I told him that he could live in my heart, that he could be king of my life. Some did not believe. Some still do not believe. But as for you, Yeshua, my art will be your Bethlehem. Silently, how silent. 
For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Although our nation was still in turmoil, the angel's words on the night of his birth still rang through. He brought goodwill to all men. Israel was still oppressed, and she would be for many years to come. But one day, all would be well. I could not explain it, nor do I completely understand it. After all, his death on the cross seemed to be the complete opposite of peace. But as I accepted what he had done on that cross, peace came to my heart. In the coming years, I would know more fully what is coming like this meant for us. This peace could be experienced personally. He was our Prince of Peace, the peace we had longed for, and the answer to our heart's cry.
And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, as it was told unto them. That first night, when the angel announced his birth, Elim and I committed ourselves to tell every person we met about what we had seen that night. Later, after his death, we mourned. The Messiah, the one we had trusted to deliver us, was now dead. But then John and Peter and Mary told us their stories. And then we saw him for ourselves. He was alive. True, of course true. Yes, Israel rejected him. He was a man of sorrows, as Isaiah wrote. But I remember his words to us on a dusty hillside one afternoon when he said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Come for forgiveness. A simple task, really. Perhaps the hardest step to take is the first one. Man was given a gift on that night long ago. If only he will open his heart to receive this precious gift, he will know a joy that's beyond all understanding. As John later wrote, but as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. Let the world rejoice. Her king has come.
中。